Well, we're about ready to start our taper, and I have uh, moved the taper attachment up so that this end is way under the headstock. The other end is clamped such that we are able to uh, move our carriage in the range that we needed. And this is about three quarter inch aluminum stock we're going to turn, and we're going to put about a three degree or three inch taper on there. And we've got that set for three degrees. We're in the middle position there. You know, I had to remove the chip guard for all of this business, so I got a piece of paper in there that'll deflect the chips and keep them from getting in there where that uh, uh, screw is. You don't want chips uh, around your crossfeed screw. And we're going to use the power feed, and all of our feeding is for a power feed for longitudinal. All of our uh, inward feeding is going to be with the compound. We've got a round nose tool in there, and it's set right on center. It's very important that your tool be set on center when you are turning tapers. Okay, we're going to begin the first cut. Turning in the compound. And there we have it, a three degree taper. 
Okay, now we're going to make an internal taper to match this three degree taper. So I have in the chuck, the three jaw chuck, a slug of aluminum. Oh, it's about an inch and a half in diameter. And I did drill a 7 16 hole in there. And I guess what I didn't have, I didn't realize is I did have to change uh, this guide bar to three degrees on the other side of zero before we were over here on this three degree mark. So now we're over here. So in some ways we lost minor accuracy, I suppose. And I did have to move this up a couple holes, so that proved to be beneficial. And now we'll begin boring. This is our last pass. there isn't much to see when I'm boring. Here's another little uh, snippet to further illustrate the principles of a taper attachment and how it's really doing nothing more than duplicating or copying the angle that the guide bar is set at. I've reset this at 4 degrees I placed some temporary uh, index marks here on the drawbar and on this little aluminum guide. And uh, <clears throat> I just want you to watch those two black marks separate and come up to this other one. As I run this taper, it's about four, four inches long I'd say, this is going to be a dry run. I have a separate feeding uh, unit on this so I don't have to turn the spindle on. I'm not going to make any chips. Here we go. The 
carriage is moving. And you can see the witness marks separating. As I move along the taper, simulating a cut. Now I'm going to throw it in reverse. We've come up to that other line. We are now moving backwards toward the tailstock. And the black marks will again coincide, at which time I'll turn the feed off so I don't crash it into the tailstock. That might help you understand what's going on here with the taper attachment. Okay, here we have it, both an internal and an external three degree taper. There's the internal taper. There's another look at the three degree taper. Now let's try cutting a taper from the headstock toward the tailstock, and I've got the Attachment set at three at uh, two degrees now. I provided an undercut as a place to start this taper since the small diameter is right here. Where are your safety glasses? cutting to any particular dimension here. This aluminum cuts real nice. This is a shallow taper, only two degrees. This Atlas lathe is a noisy machine. Let's see if we can get the cutting tool out of the way. Here's hoping that this little video helped you understand the principles of a taper attachment, how to use it, and perhaps even some ideas on how to make one if you don't have one, because I think you're going to find that most small lathes you find in the homes are not equipped with this expensive attachment, and it's kind of a rare unit. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.